In today's clip, I'm going to invent a new term in personal finance uh, called efficiencism, and I'm going to compare it to minimalism. So I'm going to define it, see what they have in common, see what differentiates between the two, and then see uh, who it's appropriate for. Hey, oh, Zanbak here. Okay, so what am I talking about today? What is efficiencism versus minimalism? Well, let's define the term that everybody knows better, minimalism, right? Uh, this is how I take it to mean. Boiling your life down to the bare essentials so that we are unencumbered by the expectations of the mass consumerist machine around us. Example, the minimalist bros, right? They literally can travel on one carry-on suitcase per person because they've done such a good job of this type of materialistic distillation, okay? So, then this term that I'm introducing, efficiencism, right? It's really about boiling your, down, uh, your life down to what matters to you, with no limit on stuff so long as the emotional returns are commiserate with your material expenditures. Here's my example, right? You can be a collector of whatever nerdy paraphernalia that you want, so long as those items don't own you, you get joy from them, okay? okay? And it's uh, fine to shop at Costco and buy in bulk, because that's usually more efficient, financially speaking. Okay, so what do they actually have in common? A lot, actually. So, number one, it's a rejection of consumerism, right? Because you don't need a new smartphone every year. Um, not even every three year. Possibly every five, depending on the advances in technology. Five to seven, I'd say. So don't fall prey to advertising's urge to create demand in you, okay? No, you don't need a four or 5,000 square foot McMansion for a family of four. If you've ever seen any heat map on the usage of uh, uh, housing uh, for real American families, you'd see that 90% of those spaces go unused uh, probably 360 out of 365 days out of the year. Okay. Another thing these two things, uh, philosophies have in common are uh, the value that we put on uh, utility rate, right? Like how much you use an item, which means that you can buy something that's longer lasting, better quality for more, uh, uh, for a higher price. And that's okay because being a minimalist and being an efficiencist means that, hey, it's okay to purchase things because these are items that you're actually going to use quite a lot, right? So the price per use is low. As long as that's standard, I think you're doing fine, right? Uh, and, and another commonality between these two philosophies is really just like uh, placing more value on experiences over things. You've heard this, and thats I generally agree with this. This is just how human beings are, right? We tend to, like, we want stuff, but as soon as we buy it, its value to us drops immediately, right? Whereas the memories that you get from experiences, especially in, like, a shared type of, you know, circumstance, that will last uh, with you for a lot longer, right, in terms of emotional returns. Now, the fun part is more about what the differences are, okay? So... To me, one of the biggest problems with minimalism is, is, is that having less material goods means a less margin of error, right? A real easy example is like, how many rows of toilet paper do you buy at the same time, okay? Because to a minimalist, it seems to me like you're, you're really supposed to just have what you barely need. And that's just kind of silly. I don't think anyone understands or needs me to explain why having only one roll of toilet paper might be a problem in a household. Especially this year. Look at the look, look at the pandemic, right? Like is having a stash of dried foods that will last forever a bad thing? I mean, you're not being minimalistic, but it, you're being very efficient. You see what I'm saying? These are things that you're going to eat anyway. Things that will help you in the long run. Perfectly perfectly okay when you're being efficientist, but not when you're being a minimalist, right? Second thing, tools, right? Uh, tools to fix things. Unless you're like MacGyver who could patch up an airplane with a scotch tape and a safety pin, okay? If, if you're that guy, you're totally fine being a minimalist, okay? You, you, you look at what MacGyver does with almost nothing, right? Like just whatever he finds. But that's not 99% of the people, right? So if you're, if you're not MacGyver, then your choices are either get tools so that you can, you know, upkeep your own house or get a handyman for any regular small household needs, which is incredibly inefficient, right? Which, see, that point actually brings me to 
my main complaint about minimalism, right, is that it's just kind of bougie and exclusive to people with means, right? Like, look, I, I actually like the minimalist aesthetic, right? And I joke with my wife that eventually I want a living room that just has like mats in it, okay? So no furniture, no de decor, just mats, okay? But that's essentially a meditation room, right? And that implies that I have the room or really the multiple rooms enough to cordon off one of these rooms for this very specialized purpose, okay? Now, if you're a regular guy and you don't have that much living space, maybe if you live in an apartment you have only one room or two, life needs to happen in these rooms, right? You can't just all of a sudden say, hey, oh, yeah, minimalist ideal of having almost nothing. That's just not gonna happen, right? Like, unless you already are flush, okay? That's different, right? So, who is both of these appropriate for? That's the real question, right? The reality is, I think, like, if you're like the uh, the minimalist, uh, you know, I call them the minimalist bros because it's two dudes, right? If you're like those guys, if you've always felt like a nomad, minimalism might be the perfect choice for you, right? Like, if you could boil down your entire regular life down to a suitcase or two, you know, suitcase and a duffel bag, I, I, I'd call it. That's fantastic, right? Uh, all the more power to you. However, I think human beings generally like to settle, right? We're settlers rather than nomads, right? Look at the majority of human beings. We want to be a part of a stable community. That's just reality, right? In that case, you know, uh, while I would never advocate for waste, being able to, like, buy in bulk and to learn and use tools as, as human beings are designed to do, I think that's a much more appropriate way to accomplish, you know, a, a, a simple lifestyle. And that's really both minimalism and efficiencyism, the ultimate goal is the same, right? You want a simple lifestyle, but that doesn't mean that you have to get rid of all your stuff, okay? Now, I get it. Like, maybe my definition of minimalism isn't what everyone else's is. Oh, let me know in the comments below, right? But still, when you hear the word, that's what you imagine. You, know, like, you imagine like people who have less and less of stuff and, until one day they basically can live with almost nothing. And that's very aesthetic and it's monk-like. But that's not reality, okay? I like stuff. I think it's okay to have stuff. The only question is, the guiding philosophy for myself is still simplicity, right? You, you stick with that and you can have some multitude of backup worth of stuff and it's totally okay and you'll have a much better time, you know, living a happy life. Thanks.